Um, so we now we have this, and we also need to parameterize this one. Yeah, this one, right? And this is from the softmax. You use fixed in here, and we to get the impact of V, the probability, and we summarize all the possible choices. So depending on the V, this is going to be very expensive to compute, right? Think about you in your Facebook data. So number V is more than 10 billion, something like that, right? So this is heavy. You try to avoid the burden. So I explained this. And so optimizing the random bug embedding is the same as the finding the embedding Z, Z that minimizes loss. So, and this is heavy, right? And this nested sum is also makes this um, very expensive. So this is their complexity in we try to reduce this. And when we just focus on the, the, the softmax part and this part, so by uh, utilizing the property of the logarithm in approximately it is same as um, this one, not the same, the approximately uh, same as. So here we submit all the possible nodes. Instead, we just considering the k number of the nodes. Need need a more, another explanation, right? So here from this, since instead of the exponential, we put the sigmoid, slight variation, right? And instead of this, we get this sigmoid and to make the probability between the zero to one. And instead of this, we have this, right? So K negative samples are used. So you may wonder how to choose the K, right? So that is the key idea. Mm. The easiest way is just randomly sample. So this is could be seen as uh, the negative information. So this is positive information. It is from our um, the true context information, and this is just this is just for normalize, right? So it is important to get the many. Also need to consider many irrelevant idea to approximate the the random distribution, right? Um, so K could be chosen from just uniformly from the, all the possible V, but in the debug paper, they chose the K, I, I mean the K number of nodes, K number of nodes from using the, the degree distribution. So when, when some V, when some node has, for example, this one, this one has high degree, right? And this, uh, K could be chosen for here um, much more in probability. And there are many theoretical and empirical studies about choosing the negative node. So it started with the degree distribution, but there are many choices, possible choices, and in, in practice, we just choose from five to 20, but I would say it varies a lot. It varies a lot. So you need to choose the, the, the right K from your validation data set, and you need to choose some hyperparameter search. This is the how to make a the better negative the noise is another big area. So 
it could be a very good topic, but people studied a lot. The optimization of the typo, yeah. So I briefly mentioned about the optimization in, in the pseudocode, right? So we have lost. We initialize Z randomly. We iterate this conversions. And we sample the node V and we get the neighbors and we get using the gradient descent and and in this case, stochastic gradient descent and derivative, we just update, the, which is same as the, the neural networks, uh, the error back propagation, and we, we just go to the, the, the matrix and update the, 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 the vertex representation. All right. So this is called negative sampling. So, which was developed for the word to back, but we have another choice for optimization, which is called hierarchical softmax. So deep, deep work paper actually used the hierarchical softmax in the beginning, but the previous, the variant in the, the, the other version of the deep work all use negative sampling. Uh, but it's worth knowing the the idea of the hierarchical softmax. The the key idea is this is your input node, and you we build the a the the tree. This is a binary tree it has two different children, and and we all have so we have the v number of the nodes right so in the leaf node there are v number of the possible leaf nodes so but their depth is fixed in this case we have the the depth is g is same, the same as three we to get the probability of the output where it is to two to given the, the input and we just choose uh, the probability of this set multiplied by pro probability of the this set and the probability of this set and then we can get this probability so instead of the the previous the expensive the optimization we use this one we just build um, some alternative neural network and we learn this instead of the skigram so from theoretical perspective negative sampling has this uh, relationship right so we use instead of the exponential we just use sigmoid and instead of the normalization we use the negative sampling but similarly uh, we may imagine, but um, the the architecture wise used different architecture. I don't know how to understand this theoretically, but it this um, minimize the the space complexity and time complexity a lot, and you can think about their uh, learning complexity is very low free. And, and for your information, the negative sampling, their time complexity is the, this one, so linear time, so faster, right? So you may wonder the effect of the parameters. So this digit is from the deep, deep work. So D is the the dimension of the latent representation, right? So, which means the dimension of the lower dimensional matrix, right? So we start, we talked about two, and here we can two to the four. It could be two to the eight, and it goes up, and at some point it goes down. I 
think this is from the learning parameter. Uh, maybe the, the, the proportion of the training, but yeah, check it out. And so in this another data set, so D, depending on the, the choice of D, the, the performance varies a lot, right? So this is the the factor of the parameter, the gamma. So number of works, and obviously this represents the number of the the input data, right? It goes up, and performance also goes up. It increased, right? So one benefit from the deep work, so we can expect more parallelizability, right? So we can put another workers. So in our pseudocode, so we choose the input and output pair, we learn the skip gun, right? So it could be parallelized. We can hire the many number of workers. So, but at the same time, we need to share the parameter. And so when we have more workers, so the relative time decrease and but their uh, performance keep uh, stayed, right? Which means it is it became more efficient. So this is the end of the deep walk. So it's time to discuss about the, the next version, which is called Node to Vac. So, so you understand the deep work right now. The, the only difference is, previously we talked about just random work for the context. The previously that random work was unbiased because we just evenly see the possible neighbors and choose that uniformly. It corresponds to degree, just degree, right? And now, we are going to talk about biased second order random. This is the only difference. And note to back, instead of the, the hierarchical softmax, they use note to negative sampling. So we have trade off. So this is the motivation. So the, the rather than using unbiased random work, so we can think about bias random, but we need to have choose some strategy to see local view more or global view more. We need to choose our strategy for the random. What is the benefit for considering the local view? Sometimes to understand the node U, the nearby node R, more important, right? It could be depending on the nature of the data, right? In this case, the random work should, should, should stay nearby the node U. This is also called local view. What is the opposite, the global view? So it goes out from the U, just, just go out, go out. It is something like DFS, right? The global view is could be sent as DFS, local view could be sent as BFS, right? So that was the idea. So when we use BFS, our traversal could be something like this. In DFS, you would go something like this. So to parameterize so two different view, we need to parameterize the BFS and DFS and to generate the random work. And this is the BFS and DFS. And we need to introduce two different parameters. So first one is the return parameter. Second one is the, the in-out parameter. So return parameter is to decide random work to it, it move this you choose the random work, run the next of the random work step to the previous node. 
Another one is in out parameter. It decides to um, make it move out or inward. So let me give you an example. So we started from new. We came to S1. Now we need to, now it came to the W. So con controlling the P, P was a return parameter, right? We can control the probability to go back to S1 or not, right? We're controlling this. Just decide this one. And to, by controlling the this Q in our parameter, we may came back to uh, so we put just one for the S2. So and when S2 is connected here, and in the S2 should connect it uh, to the the current node V the W and the previous node S1. We put one for default and one over Q, one over Q decided here. So when Q is smaller than one, it became higher, right? And then it should goes out. It is something more like a DFS, right? Oh, it's stupid DFS. It is higher than one, it became smaller and it's likely to go to this one, right? It is more something like DFS. So it is on non-normalized probabilities and we're controlling this one and we can control the strategy of random walk. RW, I'm sorry, random walk. The result is here. So depending on our choice of P and Q, result became different. It is, it is from the nature of the network and we there the difference is quite big in some case so it is also from the the parameter sensitivity from by fixing p and q and also uh, follows the previous observation So we have talked about two different network embeddings, which are originated from the Skikram architecture. So now we, it is time to generalize the network embedding. The goal is to encode nodes so that similarly in the embedding space approximately similarly in the original network. So network embedding the problem is, so, so we use the Karate network as an example, right? We have a written network. We map the each node onto the embedding space, right? The work and node to back, they got they got the, the, the two dimensional, the, the representation, right? So this is defined in the embedding space, right? We need to decide the encoding function. Encoding function is to decide, so the D work is the same as the, the feature matrix, the Z, right? So you using the same Z, the V is located in here. So, by having this encoding function, the similar node should be placed the, the nearby, right? For example, in the deep work, they're using context for representing the, the starting node, right? So obviously U and V are connected and in the random perspective, they are similar node. So embedding space, they should be uh, placed nearby, right? So our similarity is defined 
in the deep walk, and similarly is from the random walk similarly. So when the random walks are similar, the nodes are similar. So we can generalize the network problem right now. So we need to decide our own the encoding function in the measure of similarity. It could be, it could vary depending on the nature of the data, right? So I explained this. Define encoding, encoder, encoder and similarity. And yeah, this is from the deep work that we talked about this. Um, defining code and load similarly and optimize parameter. So this is the, the, the common procedure. So we can say so from the perspective of encoder, so you can use Skigram, right? Or some other neural networks, right? You can develop your own neural networks. It could be anything. And similarly wise, you need to decide, for example, random mark in the, the previous, the two examples, right? We just consider they are connected or not. Just simply see, connected or not. Surprisingly, that was the, one of the papers in, in, in the top conferences. And they share neighbors or not? They have similar structural roles or not? In this case, structural role means some nodes are, some nodes have some bridging role. The bridging role means they are connecting two different clusters, right? Some nodes are just hub. In this case, bridging node means reaching two different nodes. Some nodes just have the high degree and some nodes have a lot of triangle, right? This is called the structural walls. And sometimes these structural wall based similarly is more important in, for example, transportation network. It could be definitely important, right? So it, this could be the airport this could be the crossroad and this could be, I don't know, some, some communication network could be important in this triangle. So instead of the random work and considering this structural pattern could be more important. So some other examples are listed up in here. So now you may wonder more theoretical understanding about uh, deep walk in node to back. And these are also another popular network embeddings. And this could be seen as the matrix spectralization. So matrix spectralization is a previously popular the dimension reduction method. So from the adjacency, and we uh, decompose this A into, for example, an X and Y. And, and when their dimensionality is V by V, V by V, and this could be V by K, and this is K by V, right? But we use this one for reduced the representation, right? They found, this paper found that when we just compute this one and deep work embedding is the major spectralization of this one. Also, so deep work embedding is the matrix spectralization of this computation. That was their finding. So instead of the A, they compute this and using the existing matrix spectralization, in this case they use SVD and get the, the, the X part. And that was the, 
approximately same as the deep, the embedding of deep work. They found that. So they found a theoretical relationship between the four different uh, embeddings and they found, they developed another idea from the observation. So for example, so what is it? This one, so maybe from this, the work, the deep work. So we have deep work and some internal processing. We get the matrix vectorization. So SVD is getting this, right? Left and right singular vector and eigenvalue matrix, right? And we reduce the similar, the, the dimension at D, right? And this one is there became the network embedding. So th they found that this one is the approximately same as the deep work embedding. That's all. So now we understand the optimization of the, the popular node embeddings and their theoretical understanding so far and the actual learning methodologies, right? So you are ready to apply this technique for your own problem. So our new homework will be released soon. And stay tuned and thank you for your attention and have a good weekend. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.